Welcome to the SIBO Doctor Podcast with Dr. Narala Jacoby, a US-trained naturopathic physician and director of SIBOTest.com, an online breath testing service and education portal for practitioners. In this podcast series, medical experts join us to discuss functional digestive disorders, clinical practice and research as it relates to small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and associated conditions. This podcast is intended for SIBO treating practitioners and aims to help educate how we may best serve our SIBO patients. If you're a practitioner and want to learn more about SIBO, head over to the SIBO Test Education Portal where you can sign up for courses, masterclasses and group mentoring sessions to expand your knowledge for successful treatment outcomes. If you're a patient, Please know this information is not intended to diagnose or treat a medical condition. Please ask your doctor before initiating any new treatments. And now, over to Dr. Jacoby and the SIBO Doctor podcast. If you're like me, you're finding that treating small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can be complicated. Patients often present with a myriad of symptoms and associated conditions which require holistic thinking and a methodical approach to treatment. This podcast was born out of a desire to start a conversation with other practitioners, educators, experts and researchers and see if their insights can give us new treatment considerations, especially for our difficult cases. In this podcast series, our guests talk about functional gut disorders, hormonal issues, the enteric nervous system, food intolerances, the immune system, the microbiome, methylation and genomic issues, and everything else that can make a SIBO case very confusing. I believe that by understanding the often complex interconnection of SIBO with other disease manifestations, we can be more effective in our treatment approaches. I hope you find this podcast useful in your practice, and thank you for listening. Welcome SIBO practitioners to another episode of the SIBO Doctor Podcast, and today I have Mim Beam with me. And for those of you who know Mim, uh, she really doesn't need much of an introduction because in Australia she is naturopathic royalty. She's been a naturopath for 30 years, she's written books, she's been a regular columnist in newspapers. She's been she's been on TV, on radio, so she does a lot to promote naturopathic medicine and all these different media. And also she's been a lecturer and, um, uh, at the Australian College of Natural Therapies and has actually two practices. And one of the reasons I was so excited when I heard about MIMS sort of area of expertise is because I've been looking for something like this for a long time. And which is breathing and um, its effects on the digestive tract. So let's get started and welcome Mim to the SIBO Doctor podcast. Thank you so much, Narala. And I am a total fan of yours. I am so excited that you've contacted me. And yes, I adore you and your work. Oh, you're you're too kind. (laughs) That's very sweet. We've, um, you know, sort of crossed paths a few times and you've um, been involved also in other um, fun- well, functions or um, the Australian Naturopathic Summit. So we, we are aware of each other a little bit, but it's really nice to hear that you also do a lot of SIBO testing and SIBO treatment. I treatments. do indeed. Mm. Wow, it's amazing. So thank you so much for all your input there. My pleasure. So, you know what, we're going to dive into this because you're the absolute expert in combining the SIBO and the breathing. And when I heard you on the FX Medicine podcast, it was like a light bulb went off because... I've been feeling this for a while when I, you know, when I have patients that are highly anxious or that are um, quite guarded in the upper digestive tract on physical exam. I'm always giving them breathing exercises. Turns out I've given them the wrong breathing exercises when I listen to your podcast. So (laughs) can you tell us a little bit more about your story and how you came to uh, Buteco breathing? Yeah, yeah. I... I came to Buteco about 25, 26 years ago when, when I was actually um, a regular 
uh, on a on a radio station called Triple J. So I was I was their naturopath on weekly, and this fellow with this really unusual technique called Buteco was stalking me really, and I you know he basically wanted me to promote him. And I'd heard of Buteco and I'd heard that it was good for asthma. And I had asthma, so I thought, radio, I'll do it. And I did it three days in a row, just one hour for three days, and it totally cured my asthma, And which is pretty phenomenal. And I don't know why I didn't <laughs> think more of it at the time. I just thought, well, that's great for asthma. And so whenever I had a patient with asthma, I'd say, you should check it out. And, of course, they never did. And so um, 2011... I decided to learn the technique so that I could teach it to my patients and I really thought it was just going to be about asthma. And so I went to the States to study uh, with a fellow called Patrick McEwen, who's Irish, who studied with Professor Buteco in Russia. Buteco died in 2003, so I was just a little bit late. Uh, it would have you know, not been as effective had I have, um, yeah, anyway, chose, mm. chose Patrick. And um, it was just... The light bulb moment there was like, oh, my God, are you serious? And the effect of breathing on so many body systems. And so I've just – I'm, I'm a used car salesman. I'm really just <laughs> – I, I, I can't believe how excited I still am and the effects, the the amazing results. So, I mean, I love naturopathy. I'm, you know, I, I love herbs. I love diet. But, you know, this is fundamental. If you're not breathing well. So people, you know, when I say I'm a breathing educator, there's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know, I'm all right. I'm still alive. <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, yeah, you can have a bad diet and still be alive. You can do no exercise and, and still be alive. But how well are you? So this, um, you know, how well do you breathe? And it's, it's crazily simple. Mm. Well, yeah, uh, that's that's kind of what I got from just from my, what I gathered from what you had been saying before. But, um, you know, we're going to kind of go into the physiology of what really happens because th it's magic. You know, I didn't I had no clue that some of these things really affect smooth muscle tone and other things okay. that you talk about with nitric oxide. So there is a real element of not just doing this for relaxation for our oh, patients. Oh, no, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. It's kind of the byproduct. It's like, you know, I mean, we both know, and I mean, most practitioners out there will, will know that if someone has stress hormones around, it's just going to make everything worse. Mm. You know, it may be the cause, but it's definitely, you know, whatever the, the diagnosis um, you know, add stress there and it's not going to help matters. So anything that switches on the parasympathetic nervous system is going to be a bonus mm. regardless of whatever else is going on. So is that how it works or is it through, is, is it really through multiple physiological effects on the body? And maybe we can kind of go into that a little bit. What actually Fantastic. happens during so one of those. What the premise of the method is, is that for one reason or another, people have developed a pattern of over breathing and it's called chronic hyperventilation. It's actually, it is actually a syndrome. And so chronic long-term hyperventilation. So it's not this acute episode of hyperventilating, which would be a panic attack, but it's over the long-term losing more carbon dioxide. So basically breathing more than we metabolically need. So it's, it's quite subtle and it is all about carbon dioxide. So we think of carbon dioxide as a poisonous gas, which it is in excess, but it's really um, this calibration of just one or two percent of increasing. So increasing carbon dioxide has several effects on the body. One is, as we alluded to, increasing parasympathetic nervous activity. So in the old days when people had a panic attack, they'd get them to breathe into a paper bag and that is recirculating your carbon dioxide. So switching on parasympathetic nervous system. Mm. Increasing carbon dioxide also relaxes smooth muscle. So, you know, bowel, bowels are smooth muscle. And so this could be for reflux, for IBS when it's not SIBO. I'm very <laughs> conflicted now about that. <laughs> um, you know, various, you know, either diarrhea or constipation. And, you know, because there's some people constipated and it's because they're holding on. 
Um, mm. And so this can really help with that. Smooth muscle, I mean, the gallbladder is smooth muscle. The, the bile ducts are smooth muscle. The respiratory tract is smooth muscle. So that's how it helped with my asthma is that the 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 airways were that just a little bit more dilated, a little bit more relaxed so that when the trigger, and mine was an exercise-induced asthma, when uh, the trigger, it just didn't go into the full episode so um arteries are smooth muscles so this is how it can help with blood pressure mm. uh, the the a smooth muscle of the bladder smooth muscles the uterus so you know irritable bladder or it can help women with um dysmenorrhea it it has all of those effects on on relaxing smooth muscles. So I think your some of your interests might be there as well as the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, the um, other effect, and uh, so so this is you know the relax uh, uh, dilating um, or relaxing the smooth muscle of the blood vessels, not just the bigger arteries but the capillaries. So you're going to improve circulation to the periphery, bringing oxygen bringing nutrients to the area and then taking the waste products away so you know one of the holy grails when in in herbal medicine you know improved circulation and here we've got it of it opens up the airways the other thing with um if you take breathing we're, we're absolutely um you know it's it's so important to only breathe through your nose so the and the nasal cavity which takes up a third of the skull um, you know, it's just like we think of the nose as this bit that juts out in front of our, in front of the face, but in fact, the nasal cavity is huge, and all of those membranes that's the that um, cre- create and produce nitric oxide, this mm. magic chemical nitric oxide. And so, if you are a mouth breather, it's like you know, don't swear in, don't, don't mm. swear to me, uh, that if you are, you're missing out on all of that nitric oxide. So that's another important thing, and just the one another a benefit of increasing carbon dioxide is something called the Bohr effect. So Norella, I, I didn't study that, or I, if I did, I forgot. Did you do much about the Bohr effect in your studies? Is that like the? It's not Niels Bohr, the chemist. It's, the... it's his father. Oh wow! Yeah, it's his dad. Oh wow! <laughs> Same family. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Christian Bohr, Christian Bohr was um, a physicist, and Niels Bohr was his son. And Niels Bohr was the one that um, found the um, described the atomic structure and was involved in the That's atomic right. bomb. Yeah. But his Dad, in 1904, described this action called, which we call the Bohr effect, which you would, um, that, have we got a Jacobi effect yet? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so watch, uh, watch this space. Anyway, the Bohr effect um, says that increasing carbon dioxide or, or oxygen is released from the hemoglobin molecules in response to carbon dioxide. So this kind of almost paradoxical um, action of if carbon dioxide levels are a little bit higher, you will get more oxygen delivery. Mm. So pretty amazing. So, you know, improving concentration and, and, you know, basically oxygen delivery throughout the body. So this means that this can be very effective even if someone has got lung damage. So COPD, emphysema, um, pneumonia, you know, old TB, anywhere where there's scarring or some of the tissue is actually damaged, it means well, you're not going to get that back. But what you can do is improve oxygen delivery in the body. So doing more with what you've got. Mm. So is it like, okay, because we know when somebody is very stressed, they're sort of shallow breathing and they're, shall- they're breathing off carbon dioxide yep. and therefore not signaling for any oxygen release and stuff. So is this sort of, um, you know, what the treatment is or the, the exercises are based on to slow down breathing or is it deep breathing yeah. or... What's yeah, it yeah, based yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And and, the, and those words get confused. It's basically first all, first off, only nose breathing, and then the exercises are are. It's a bit like breathing boot camp, is that we're trying to increase carbon dioxide, and we're trying to increase carbon dioxide so that the respiratory centres in the brain gets used to that being the new normal. So if the the this idea that for whatever reason the person has been over breathing or 
hypervent uh, chronically hyperventilating so that their carbon dioxide levels are a little bit lower what we're trying to do is reset those respiratory centers in the arteries leading to the brain and in the brain to uh, just dial it up a little bit so that that's the new normal so that the carbon dioxide levels are that just that little bit normal high higher is normal so readjusting the homeostatic temp you know level so i you know i did this you know 25 26 years ago never had asthma since only did it for three hours so wow. it must have just been that like okay it lifted that that my body that required that little bit more carbon dioxide and that's that was then mm. the set point so it's it's fantastic in that it's a permanent solution mm. it's not that you will only feel the benefits if you do these exercises and you can need to keep doing them ideally you are then and this is the beautiful naturopathic you know mm -hmm. just bring the body back into balance which is what we try to do all the time mm. well that's what it like one of the things that you know, we always are looking for are are things patients can do themselves and uh, that yes. they can they don't need a pill they don't need a potion they can just regulate their own nervous system and their own uh, breathing and therefore impact their digestive function so i'm just really curious to to also find out are there treatments or the uh, exercises that you prescribe do they differ with different conditions or is it fairly is it pretty much the same one because i know in the end of this session we're going to talk about your upcoming workshops and stuff and they're in depth i mean they're like long workshops so you learn a lot about the physiology and so forth but i'm i'm just curious like I'm, i was just amazed how much there is i don't know about breathing <laughs> yeah same same um mm. yeah absolutely i'm and uh you know th there's a whole world out there uh you know so i'm, I'm actually about to go now on a i think we talked about this previously on a on a three-day workshop with Rosalba Courtney who did her PhD in this area and uh, so she's not an osteopath and uh, she just basically teaches breathing now so I'm going to learn some more mm. in the next few days that um, I've just lost the, my thread of thought no <laughs> the different exercises yeah. yeah yeah I know it's it's the yes yes and no the aim of most of them is to increase carbon dioxide, but there are different exercises. So, for example, I would not give – there's an exercise called steps where you breathe in, breathe out, you block your nose, and you walk for as long as you can, you know, 80, 90 steps. And then – and it's pretty hard and it's actually – um, quite stressful on the body. I would not give that to someone who's just had a heart attack. I would not give that to a pregnant woman, that exercise. There would be exercises that I'd be very happy to give to anyone. Um, so there are exercises that are better for children. There are exercises um, better suited to different conditions. So I'm very interested in sleep apnea. That's the that's an area that fascinates me and you know, I, I want to um, skill up um, more in that area so the the exercises for sleep apnea would not be something like the steps where you're stopping breathing because these people do it in their sleep mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that that i'm um, what i'm interested what the benefit the the exercises there's something called reduced volume breathing and there's there's um you know different variations of that but basically you're increasing carbon dioxide as well as you're increasing the oxygen delivery mm. so there it's i'm making it sound complicated and it isn't but it is not just one exercise right okay. fits all or suits all and so i'll have in any of my classes i'll have someone with anxiety i'll have someone with asthma or sinusitis another person with sleep apnea um, another person with a bowel condition um, and i will then give them each um, uh, different homework exercises. So I do it over a four week period um, so that I can see, we can track the changes and that, that I'm sure that they, they know how to do the exercises, which is different to the way Buteco is traditionally done, which is that three days in a row. I, I like, and I suppose that's the naturopath in me. I, I, you know, I want to, want to see that they've, they kind of are adopting it in their lifestyle.
mm. and and to see the changes over the over time. And it, it's always, I I have a money back guarantee. Oh my <laughs> god! I, wow. I have never I have never had to give my money back. <laughs> You mean their money back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, so I'm not going to. I'm not, and I'm certainly not saying to people it'll be a hundred percent. But everyone notices an improvement. Mm. That that's really amazing. So can you um, kind of go into what specifically with IBS and with SIBO, uh, what you notice, what particularly gets improved, if, if there is such yeah. a thing? Because I know that there is individu individuality with each person, of course, but is there a reduction in bloating, you know, even though may maybe SIBO isn't completely cleared, but that we do see some symptom control with, with just breathing? Yes, and I mean, I'm so recently um, a SIBO uh, advocate. I, I, it's, it really, I'm so pleased you brought this to our attention because it's really, for me, the missing link. Uh, so I, so I must say, it's only been, you know, in the past few months that, and I'm not sure how many SIBO patients I've, I've dragged <laughs> into doing my Viteco course. So, but I, but, it, but the fact that. You know, generally, if there's an, if the, I guess there's a problem in one area of the bowel, it's a bit like the spine. You know, it it will it may well be reflected elsewhere. So, if for example there's burping or it, the reflux, because we're increasing the nitric oxide, we're going to that improves sphincter control, and so the esophageal, the cardiac sphincter, even the anal sphincter. So that I think is makes the big difference with 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 people and if there's any of the sympathetic driven gut you know because basically you know if, if you stress the digestive system starts to shut down and so we're just improving the functioning by in increasing parasympathetic nervous mm. activity yeah so it's interesting that it relaxes smooth muscle but it sort of tonifies the sphincters for lack of a better term i guess so we, yes because it seems to have like opposing effects on different uh structures yeah. almost it improves the nitric oxide improves the functioning of the sphincters mm. yeah Great. so Fabulous. yeah so what other symptoms would you would you say are the hallmarks of somebody who needs to or red flags uh, for people to sort of notice whether or not they could improve with yeah. a, a breathing okay. course. Well, 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 signs of dysfunctional breathing are things of, uh, we've talked about anxiety, but headaches, asthma, the, those obvious ones. But someone who is a mouth breather, absolutely. If they sigh a lot, if they sniff, um, throat clearing, yawning, hearing some breathing um things like t uh, tmj pain uh gr grinding bruxism holding of the breath so people have apnea even during the day um ibs ibs that are not it's not SIBO. <laughs> um that but any 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 upper respiratory problem too so polyps or hay fever or sinus sneezing tightness in the chest these are all signs that your breathing might be dysfunctional Mm. So there is something sort of circulating on the internet. I'm wondering if it sort of is an offshoot of this. Is the the mouth taping at night? Yes. Have you seen that's, that? That's mm. no. This is the, this that's the buteco. Oh. So buteco mm. started that. Yeah. Mm. So taping the mouth, and this is very controversial, and I'm not quite sure why it is controversial. Because if you can breathe through your nose, then you can have your mouth closed at night. Mm. But it does freak people out. But yeah, it, that was started by Buteco. So you tape your mouth with Micropore, which is a surgical um, paper. There is also a fellow um, called Rob who's doing very, very well with a lip glue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's also available. And the, because if you are mouth breathing at night, you're losing all the benefits. So if you're hard at work doing these lovely exercises during the day and then you go to sleep and you're snoring and you're mouth breathing, you're actually going backwards. Mm. So it's very, very important that people have their mouth closed at night. And people generally um, will say that they feel they have a better night's sleep and that they wake refreshed. And so it's something very, very important if someone snores or has got, has got sleep apnea, particularly important that, that we start with that. And also, I mean, for the facial, the the growth of the of the face, so um, of the bones of the face, so in children um, and adolescents, we're saying you, you breathe through your nose, your mouth is closed, and your tongue is at the roof of your mouth. If your 
if you're a mouth breather, the tongue drops. And when the tongue drops, the palate, the upper palate will vault and the teeth will become all, you'll, you'll have malocclusion. Mm. And that actually, that, that vaulting of the upper palate, that goes into the nasal cavity. So you've got less room there. And so you're going to get these crooked teeth. You're going to get the jaw coming back, which is then going to have a, an effect on um reducing the upper airway, the, the patency of the upper airway. So then got people are going to be more inclined to have snoring and sleep apnea. And we know now with sleep apnea, you're more inclined to have diabetes, heart disease. It's, you know, it, it's not just, oh, uh, a bad night's sleep. It's mm. that too. Mm. So there's all of that with the, um, the sleep disordered breathing. And I think I, when I looked at your website, you have a really great little quiz that people can quiz themselves uh, yes. whether or not this is something that applies to them. And uh, your website is membeam.com, right? Uh, That's right. Thank you. Yes. And, <laughs> and I won't take, I won't, I really don't, I, I won't take people in if I don't think mm. it will work, if, if the breathing, if I don't think the breathing is part of their problem, then I don't want them to waste their time or their money. Mm. And so it's quite a good little, it seems well, it's not. I guess it's not mm. scientific, but it's a good way for me to assess whether or not their breathing may be affecting their, their symptoms. Yeah, we have the same for on SIBO tests, just because we want people yes, to screen themselves. Yes, it's a great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. I mm. love that. I, I always show that to patients. Mm. Yeah. So that's always nice because then you just really target people that might really benefit. And I'm, yeah, you know, I right. think that that so many, and especially. Um, in these kinds of crazy, anxious driven times, there is just such a need for this ki this kind of treatment that you can just do yourself. And the fact that it's actually resetting something uh, in the brain, I guess, in terms of plasticity of, of uh, uh, exactly. carbon dioxide is, detection, that's really fascinating to me and is has such promise for so much that people can just help themselves in that. I often do, you know, uh, recommend things like inner balance devices from heart math and all kinds of things where people can uh, really train themselves because it's for me I'm always thinking well 10 minutes of sitting and meditation is great but you really need to actually in order for you to exercise this little muscle of uh, remembrance of how to actually get yourself into a parasympathetic state you really need to do something a little bit more often so that it does become more of a of a habituated uh, situation because yes. people are you know the way I describe it is like if you're in sympathetic overdrive and you're you've been there for a long time in fight or flight, it's like a six lane highway. That's your auto response. You go there uh, immediately. Absolutely, and <laughs> it takes less and less. That I, you know, mm. I think the I say that the adrenals become trigger happy. So it's like mm. the tiniest little thing will cause them to, you know, see it as as a stressor. Mm. Whereas when you're and and so I I think of it as increasing the buffer. Mm. So basically, it takes more to to cause that that you know, that stress response. Mm. Yeah. So even, even though, because people say, well, you know, I'm, I'm look after a, you know, a, a, a sick relative or I've got these stresses that, that, that may be true. And they you know, we can change the way we think, but we can't change some of the circumstances, but we can change, um, you know, we can change the way we think about things and we can change the, the breath and therefore the body's response to the stresses. Mm -hmm. And by hacking, you know, and I usually describe the parasympathetic response as like a little overgrown jungle path that you never use. And so you just got to keep walking down that path and just keep yeah, exercising nice. and so that you actually widen the path and then it becomes a little bit more familiar. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, so, that's, I think is really good for people to get that kind of feedback so that they don't give up if they don't feel something the first time around. You know? Yeah, no, that's lovely. That's, that's a really, because it, it's unfamiliar. And, and I, you know, one of the things I also teach is diaphragmatic breathing, which mm. is not strictly buteco, but I cannot teach a breathing course without, <laughs> without bringing in the breathing muscle mm. and and you know it's so unusual to find someone who does uh know how to diaphragmatically breathe it's it's usually an opera singer uh people playing the flute uh or you're a yoga teacher they would be the mm. three and so and then we'll get them breathing with their diaphragm i have an old homeopathic book which i <laughs> seldom use anymore that and i put that or i put a brick on their tummy and and they go this feels weird it's like yeah man oh man it's the way we're meant to breathe and it's mm. it's isn't it strange you know mm. people have to then 
re this is how when they were a baby this is how they breathed mm. and we we've just um don't use that muscle anymore yeah that's that's so interesting and you know i, I just keep thinking about the the potential benefits that it can have to see for patients and we like we know about the parasympathetic involvement vagal nerve involvement and yep. all of that yep. in terms of motility and so i just am so excited to um, practitioners that are listening, uh, that if they feel some sort of resonance to maybe take this up is like, let's kind of talk about also, there's a lot of patients always listening to these, the, uh, these podcasts. Um, and the other day I got somebody who told me that I listened to your podcast so I can teach my doctor how to treat SIBO, <laughs> which, was, <laughs> which was really cool kind of, but anyways, yeah. um, I wonder, like, you know, because we get a lot of people from America and Canada and overseas in, in Europe and all that, um, where can they find somebody like you who t who can get mm. them started? And, well, you know, like for, on a one on one, I know you do Skype appointments and things like that as well. But um, yeah, one on one kind of teacher. Well, I was uh, I was taught by Patrick McEwen, who is the best in the world, I believe. So Patrick is Irish and goes around the world all the time. So he actually teaches um, teaches all around the world. But anyone who's been trained by him will, t will teach in a similar way to I do. So Patrick McCune is potacoclinic.com. And uh, so there, he's you know, trained a few hundred practitioners. So wherever you are in the world, hopefully there's a Patrick trained um, person near you. Um, yeah, that that mm -hmm. would be, and and uh, Patrick does on online as well, and he has, as we mentioned before, we, uh, teachers practitioners, of which have mm -hmm. got Patrick coming out at the end of this year in November, coming mm -hmm. in to do a teacher training course. Yeah, that's uh, November first uh, to the fifth. First to the fifth. That's right. Mm -hmm. And they can find info. People can find information. Can you just tell me a little bit more on your website? And yeah, sure. On my website, minbeam.com. And it, it, you don't have to be a health practitioner in order to learn this technique. Uh, but it's, I think it is a wonderful extra string to anyone's bow if you are a, um, a practitioner whether it's a you know osteo physiotherapist psychology fantastic mm. uh, naturopathy it's it's a wonderful extra you can basically in in a consultation if you think that there's a breathing aspect you can teach them a tiny little technique it'll take them four minutes mm. it'll take you four minutes to teach and that's you know i want you to take you know zinc and I want you to do small breath holds mm. <laughs> and come back and see me in a month. And you, oh, yeah, God. you were saying actually something about um, that within that time frame, you know that the parasympathetic is turned on when people yep. are salivating. Well, that's right. So we'll do, I'll do, it will even be two minutes. I'll give them a little technique in the consultation. It, it's really not going to take a huge amount of time. And I'll ask them, do you feel warmer? Do you have more saliva? Do you feel less anxious? And I, and they feel it there and then that it's working. Mm. And that's magic. Mm. They don't have to trust me. They don't have to believe me. They're feeling it in their body. And so, you know, and and we don't have to then say, well, I want you to do this an extra two hours a day. You've got two extra hours, don't you? Uh, <laughs> uh, and so they could do it on the in the train to work, in the in the yeah. in the car, you know, when they're on the on the phone waiting, you know, to a the telecom, you know, mm. the bank, you've always got an extra hour there where you're feeling quite anxious mm. uh, trying to, you know, ring a bank or a telephone company. So tell us like a, like a amazing success story. I mean, I'm sure you've got a lot of them, but it's yeah. always nice to hear like, you know, and then I cured this person of like yeah. just reading, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. No, no. Well, <laughs> well, I've got a wonderful one of um, it was a not my client, but my I had a, a client. This is my Southern Highlands practice, and she was seeing me about something else. And but her elderly mother lived with her, and the mother in her early eighties had uh, anxiety, a mild dementia, and blood pressure of over 200 the systolic and the diastolic was like 105 unbelievable mm. and the doctors were beside themselves because this woman didn't tolerate any medication so my patient said that so i said next time bring your mum along just to the to your consultation and she came along she was in a little twin set with pearls very very sweet 
mm-hmm. and I took her blood pressure and and really I've ne- I I either uh, would have thought my machine was broken or I would have sent her straight away to the hospital but I knew that this was her what her blood pressure was like over 200 over 100 mm. <laughs> as the, and so we did uh, a little uh, exercise called small breath holds and I took her blood pressure at the end and it was 165 over 95 wow and that's still mm. high mm-hmm. uh, and that's it was one of those moments yeah. and yeah. the daughter and I looked at each other it's like oh my god and this um, lovely woman mild dementia vascular dementia um, wouldn't have been able to do one of my courses it just mm. like it would have been a bit beyond her so Patrick, my teacher, he's got uh, he's he's uh, got a lovely little twenty minute. Uh, it's like a relaxation CD, but it, in fact, he's embedded it with breathing um, you know, phrases. So I gave the CD to to the daughter, and um, because her mum lived with her, twenty minutes twice a day. I got an email. It's now a couple of years ago, but I got an email. Um, Four months later, her blood pressure was consistently down to 150 to 160 over 85 to 95. Wow. Yeah, it was, and and with nothing else except mm. for doing that. And the thing is, you know, who knows? Because it was vascular dementia, whether or not had we changed the breathing 20 years prior, whether mm-hmm. or not that would have had an effect on that. Mm-hmm. So that was that. I, I, I still remember. But no, I get amazing results with anxiety. People just, um, you know, my, my own experiences. In fact, I, 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 I still, you know, I, I'm someone who historically has suffered from anxiety, and mm. um, and when I anyway. Mm. Uh, when, when I first did this, I after a couple of years of of teaching, and of course I'm much more aware of breath. I I had a day where I saw six patients in a row. Then I had it. I was giving a talk at Sydney University to 250 people, and then I had a an exam for my masters, which I've now done. Oh my back God. Into a post, yeah. What were you thinking? What were you? Why would Why would you do this all in one day? That's like a week's worth of work. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, and I did get an HD in that little exam. The next day, I thought to myself, self, a few years ago, I would have, would have not slept. I would have been beside myself. But I, I took a bus to Sydney. I took a bus to the, you know, the venue for the exam, and I was cool as a cucumber. Mm. So, and I thought the only thing that's different, I'm not taking any little pink pills. I'm not seeing a new therapist. The only difference has got to be the breathing. Mm. That's fabulous. That's exactly the kind of thing that um, um, is pure naturopathic medicine, I find. You yeah, know, like... it is so fundamental. It's mm. beautiful. It mm. really is. And it's only going to have appeal to the people that come to see you and me, the people that actually want, they, do, they don't want to take just a tablet to fix mm. things. They, 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 they want to they know they need to do the hard yards. They know they need to change. Mm. So it's not going to appeal to everyone, but it's a life changer. Mm. Well, I do feel like on some level, and perhaps it's because of the over-medication, especially overseas in America, there is this trend of like people are sick of it. They don't. They want to have different techniques or different tools that they can help themselves with. You know, this is this is definitely uh, one of these therapies that I'll I'll share for sure because I think that. That it's a forgotten art. It's it's and people always have this idea. You need to do breathing exercises in you know lotus position and all yeah. of this. It's yeah. it's it's just not the case. You you have this um, yeah. this yeah. muscle that you're that you're using all wrong and that has all sorts of I- implications on your like say digestive tract, but of course also anxiety. So. Definitely highly recommend. I, I know that we're sending one of our practitioners down to do this course in November. So very cool. And I, there's also a webinar. Can you talk about that? So so two things. One is practitioners that can't make it to Sydney for that. They there You do offer another webinar course. And then what about patients that are interested? And I think you also offer something for them on webinars or? Yes, I do. I've got a webinar, a webinar course. I do four terms of teaching a year and um, in the Southern Highlands in Sydney at different times in person which is which is the you know best if you can but you know what I do I, I do live webinars as well which are interactive 
and they work really well. So mm. I've had um, – depends on the time zones. So, you know, people in Asia often can do it uh, and all around Australia do these webinars. They're in an evening. I, I'll, I'll – if you know if, if there's enough interest, I can I can set up at different times, or I do the one-on-one, -on -one and that's uh, I guess more bespoke in that I'll really tailor it to that person's symptoms. But I think that the groups work really well. There's something magic about that that people mm -hmm. can see how it's working with other people, and you know there's that that interesting dynamic that happens in a group. Well, you might have like uh, be inundated with with webinar requests, but. Um, yeah, so go to, uh, can you spell out your name for those yes, listeners? Yes, sure. Thanks, Nirala. It's mimbeam, M-I-M-B-E-I-M.com. Okay, and just peruse the website and see what you find there. Um, and I, especially for patients listening, I think it's something to consider, especially if you've got anxiety, SIBO that's not resolving. You know, one of the, the things that I... Um, I do kind of not uh, stalk. What's the word for it? <laughs> stalk is not the word. Um, lurk. lurk, not lurk. I don't know. <laughs> what what is the what is the what's the word? You're just scrolling through Facebook groups and stuff like that. Yeah. And there are just so many people that are um, a. There's too many people giving each other advice, you know. And one thing is that very often there there are no two people two people that get the same treatment e even me when I see people mm. that are referred to me for SIBO and they're very chronic uh, chronic cases I do something totally different you know yeah. and so it's that's one thing that I want to point out but the other thing is this is something so valuable and helpful to those that are somewhere live somewhere where they don't have access to yeah. um, a lot of help and even something like that that can just at least give them a little bit more symptom relief um, and I also see patients that have been uh, treated for SIBO, cleared SIBO, still are not better, right? So we keep looking for other causes um, of their digestive uh, symptoms. And that's why I was really feeling like this is a missing link in many of my cases uh, when we reach to that point of this is definitely sympathetic overdrive and we work with that. But this is just something that they can do themselves. So I'm so happy that you're bringing awareness about this. Oh, Narala, thank you so much. And um, I, I, I'm glad that you're excited by it because I'm, I am too, <laughs> and I see amazing results. And I do believe it is the missing link in in a number of things. Exactly what you're describing. They're like, okay, I'm doing exactly what needs to to you know whether it's a herb or the diet, and how come it's not resolving? And then I say, then I have a look and see if there's some signs of dysfunctional breathing, and that can just be the 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 pieces that's mm. missing. Excellent. Can you um, just sort of like uh, walk us maybe through a small exercise? Is that something yeah, that's love appropriate? To. Love okay. to, love Great. to, love to. Okay, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> okay, all right. So mouth is closed, and if you could just, um, I guess, think about. If you've got any symptoms, is there any tightness in the chest? Is Do you have anxiety at all? Do you have a headache? If they've got or blocked nose, so if you've got any of those, if you just kind of give it a number out of 10, because what we'll do is we'll reassess at the end of a, a couple of minutes. Okay, so just uh, if you could keep your mouth closed, take a small breath in through your nose, a small breath out through your nose. Now block your nose with thumb and forefinger for five, four, three, two, and release. And then just breathing through the nose again. So what we're going to do, I'll talk you through it the entire time. You're going to take a little breath in through your nose, out through your nose, block the nose, and then release. So keeping the mouth closed, small breath in, small breath out, and block for five, four, three, two, release. In between, normal gentle breathing through the nose if you feel you need to take your hands away before i say release just do so breath in and out and block for five four three two release the tongue is resting at the roof of the mouth the tip of the tongue just behind the front teeth breath in and out and block for five four three, two, release. Allow your shoulders to drop. Breath in 
and out and block for five, four, three, two, release. Belly is soft and relaxed. Breath in and out and block for five, four, three, two, release. Imagine the space between the eyebrows is widening. Breath in and out and block for five, four, three, two, release. And just noticing if there's more saliva, perhaps you might feel warmer. Breath in and out and block for five, four, three, two, release. So I'd go on like that for another minute or so, but generally after, I, when I ask that, it's about one and a half minutes to two minutes about the saliva. I know that parasympathetic nervous system has been switched on and therefore those other things of relaxation of smooth muscle will have happened, will have increased oxygenation. So whatever I'm looking for for that person, that will hopefully, um, and they'll notice it more to the point. So it's always good if, they're, if they are a bit anxious or if they've got a headache or, or there's some symptom that you can actually notice a change in that very short amount of time. Mm, great. I definitely noticed my saliva was going. Great. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And it's, it's actually a bit of a diagnostic that if it takes more than two minutes, they really have got, as you were saying, they're, they're, they're parasympathetic. I love that jungle analogy. <laughs> they, <laughs> that, that little path is not well trodden. Mm. Uh, if, if, if it's over two minutes, they're mm. definitely um, more sympathetic activity. Great. So good. Gosh, I could, um, could talk about it for hours. Um, but for the sake of brevity, we usually try to keep them between 45 hour, minutes and an hour. Um, these, do you have anything else you want to add to this? We've got, we're, we're saying, look, sign up for the webinars. Um, you also take Skype appointments and uh, you have a practitioner training coming up in November and on webinar. So we can't say that enough. We want more people out there that experience this. Um, mm -hmm. Any other resources that you can think of where people can get more information or is this all um, pretty much enough? Well, I, Patrick uh, at butecoclinic.com has got a huge amount of information uh, that he, he readily um, disseminates. So it's available. It's it's interesting. We need we, oh, we need more we we need more practitioners out there. There's so many people that can benefit from this. Mm -hmm. So it'd be fantastic if you were interested to come and do the practitioner training. Mm. He's also uh, doing something called the Oxygen Advantage, so breathing techniques for athletes, and that's being run um, for November 9th, 10th, 11th. So improving uh, performance and stamina. Mm. Great, so good. Thank you so much, Mim, for this. And I really hope that your workshops are going to be at breaking point so that we can get more people out there. And that I, I also would like to see, like, kind of see how you're going with the SIBO treatments and see if the breathing is something that's yeah. really making a big change. Because I will, once I get trained, I'm definitely going to um, do a lot more of it in my practice. I, I do already a little bit of it, but like I said, I, I think I'm doing it all wrong now <laughs> because, <laughs> because it was more or less belly breathing, which is not necessarily what Buteco is, right? It's more about the out breath, not the in breath, I think. With, with, it's with more it. about increasing the carbon dioxide. But, you mm. know, if you're teaching diaphragmatic breathing, that's a fantastic thing. So that that's that's wonderful. Yeah. And, I'm, and this, the fact that you've got an awareness that there's a connection is um, fantastic. And I, I look, I, I also want to applaud you for the work that you're doing. And it's so valuable. So, Thanks so between much, the man. breathing and SIBO, <laughs> oh, we've got it covered. We've got it covered. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mim. I'll talk to you again soon. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for listening to the SIBO Doctor podcast. We hope you found the information in this episode useful in the treatment of your SIBO patients. Head over to our sponsor, SIBOtest.com, an online testing service for your patients and home of the Practitioner Education Portal. Tune in again for another episode of the SIBO Doctor Podcast. Thanks again for listening.